What's up everybody and welcome back to the War of Reactions. My name is Wolfie and Happy New Year, or Happy Belated New Year if this video doesn't come out by then. Hopefully you guys had a happy and safe holiday season and let's look forward to 2021 and hope this year is better than the last one. Way better. In the meantime guys, we're going to be taking a look today at... Issue number 4 of the IDW Sonic the Hedgehog comic series spin-off, Bad Guys, the final part. Without further ado guys, let's look into it. Shadow Basketball! So a new year brings new changes, so without further ado, let's try this. I don't think I like that. I really like this cover. I like the way Rough and Tumble looks so angry in this. I dig it. Anyway, if you guys are new to these comic reviews, here's how they normally go. First, I'll tell you what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, and then I give it a score. But first, I must read it back to you in an overly dramatic fashion. And I do mean overly dramatic. But before we get to that, can I ask one teeny tiny favor? It'll only take a second. All you gotta do is scroll below. Hit that like button, it helps me out a ton. Also, consider subscribing. We're almost at 19k subscribers. And ring that bell so that way you know, whenever I release a video, that it's out, because YouTube won't tell you unless you do that. It's weird. Anyway, with that all said and out of the way, let's go ahead and finish off the Bad Guys spin-off series. <laughs> Don't drop the book, Wolf. The final part of the IDW Sonic Bad Guys series. Dr. Eggman's Eggnet Hub. Our issue opens up where the last one left off with the various villains surrounding Starline. Did you really think you could betray us so easily, Doctor? We have everything we want now, except your hide. Time for your first field test. Tricor, don't fail me now. Starline activates his Tricor, leaping out of his seat and over the villain's heads before making a run for the exit. But before he can make it through, Tumble throws a punch at him, which Starline counters with a power infused one of his own. Ow, owie, ow! That dweeb has muscle? Use the gear thingy and smush him! Give me a minute! I will end him! You'd have to catch me first! Once again, Starline activates his Tricor, using the speed it grants to escape Zavik's grip. He's fast too? No, you idiot. He made a better version of the gears he gave us. He can get all three kinds of boost while we only get one. Mimic, stay here in case he doubles back. Rough, tumble, you're with me. We hunt. Makes sense. The doc needed access to the database to get what he wanted. I could find somewhere to hide and ambush him from above. Then again, Starline had a point. These guys are dangerous, and deleting me from Eggman's files won't mean squat if one of them tells him everything. But if Eggman were to get here in time and wipe out all four of them, nobody left to tattle on little old Mimic. So long, fellas. It's been fun, but now I'm free to go pay Whisper a visit. Update for you, boss. Not now, Orbot. I'm en route to the depot Sonic's attacking. That alert just cleared as false, but if you prefer to let Zavik run loose in an Eggnet hub... What? Forwarding the feed now. How in the world? All squadrons form upon me. Extra thrusters. Time to rid myself of that Zeddy once and for all. You can't hide from all of us, Doc. Come on out, we'll make it quick. Before Ruff can make it far, Starline intercepts him, tripping him up before kicking him with his toxic heel. One dose of my toxin will immobilize you. Shall we see what two will do? He's here! Starline's over here! It's over, Doctor. Even before today, you were always a failure. You're not fit to be Eggman's successor. Your planning was sloppy. Your discarding of your comrades needlessly cruel. All of it compounded by your unearned sense of pride. On second thought, all of that makes you exactly like Eggman. <laughs> as Zavik leaves, Starline drops down from the ceiling, reflecting on the past events that had happened as he begins his escape again. He's right. All this time, all my life, I've modeled myself on Dr. Eggman. I've let his ways influence my own. Even if I tried to plan around his shortcomings, my methodology is inherently flawed. I let my vendetta against Savik blind me, just as the Doctor is distracted by Sonic. I was too quick to discard my assets, just as he brashly had me cast aside. I have become everything I critiqued my idol for. But there is no time for self-pity. We're now in the damage control phase. It's time to cut my losses and achieve what I can. You! I'm gonna turn you inside out for hurting my bro! Ugh. Once again, Starline uses his toxic heal, 
Inelegant, but effective. Sorry, bro. You tried. I heard Zavik tell Mimic to guard this room. So where is he? Blast it all. How do you spot a master of disguise before he ambushes you? Or turns your own plans against you? Eggman will be here any minute. Delete Egg Bay Sigma from the registry. Convert its defenses to serve me. Erase all change logs. Get out of here before Eggman arrives. What are you idiots doing? Ease off, Z. Yeah, Starline poisoned us. Then empower yourselves with the core gears and walk it off. Ugh, looks like mine's out of juice. Urgh, then get out of my way. If you're too inept to handle one enemy, get out of my sight. Hey, I don't see you catching them. Yeah, we've been doing most of the work. Forget them. Forget all of them. We don't need a boss or a team. That's right, we work better alone. Alone together forever. You said it. Mimic, search for Starline on the security feed. Mimic? Mimic! Why am I not surprised? No matter. I will use the machine to find leads on my deadly six. We will rally and... Hello, Zavik! Come out and play! Who did this? Starline? Mimic? Does it matter at this point? The cacophonic conch was lost with the face ship. You have no means of subduing me. See Sonic the Hedgehog issue number 28. Who said anything about subduing? You're trespassing, and trespassers will be vaporized. You would destroy such a crucial installation? I can always rebuild. Taking you down while staying out of range of your EM powers is worth it. Such a waste, and I hate waste. And you're a fool if you think you're beyond my reach. Zavik begins to type on the console, turning all of the Egg Base's defenses against Eggman. Stop shooting my stuff with my stuff! Only I get to do that! <laughs> if I'm lucky, they'll wipe each other out. Man, we timed that right. I think we'll sit out this rumble. It's, it's a, a brand, brand new, new start, start for Rough and tumble. tumble. Back in the clearing, Starline overlooks the Egg Base in its final moments. Enough! Bring it down! As Eggman rains fire upon the base, Zavik, seeing no way out, activates his power core one last time, using every bit of strength he has to survive the falling base. And that is what you get when you mess with the best. Back down in the smoldering rubble, Zavik emerges with the power core fully drained and shattered, watching Eggman leave as he struggles to maintain his footing. Move. Move. Using his last bit of strength, Zavik activates one of the nearby egg pawns, utilizing it to carry him to safety. Move, heal, survive. Find my pack, get revenge. Later, Dr. Eggman's HQ. And there was no sign of Zavik. He didn't even give us a forwarding address. So Zavik is still out there somewhere. Wonderful. At least we have an answer for all the odd raids lately. An unsatisfying answer. Zavik isn't tech savvy. He doesn't know anything about my infrastructure. Why target the power core factory and Eggnet hub? How did he even know where they were? Are these rhetorical questions or? What I'm getting at is this isn't how he operates. Yes, he was involved, but something else was going on. Somebody else is making moves against me. And right now I can't be sure who it is or what they're planning. Egg Base Sigma, Starline Central Command. While the execution was far from optimal, the end results were achieved. I now have a facility that can meet the demands of my grand vision. And that vision has received new clarity. Before, I wanted the means to prove myself to Dr. Eggman. I wanted to show him I was worthy. I needed his approval. But why? I know I'm as competent as he is. I'm certainly more self-aware. I'm willing to fix my own mistakes to improve. Why bolster a man who is just as guilty of maintaining the status quo as Sonic? Why limit myself like that? I won't be conquering the world to prove myself to Dr. Eggman. I'll conquer it to prove it to myself. And I won't be proving I'm Eggman's equal. I'll prove I'm his superior replacement. And that was issue number four of the IDW Sonic the Hedgehog spin-off comic, Bad Guys. This is the last one of this series. It was a four-parter, but I think they tied this one up pretty well. I think this was probably one of the 
solidest-ish solidest. This is probably one of the most solid issues that they have made, and I think this is a great way to end this book. Like, we kind of get where everybody was coming from, and we kind of see where they all wind up. But before I get into that, let's quickly cover the cover. As I said before, I really dig, like, they got... Each, I'll put the covers over there, like, they got each of the covers individually, like, look really cool. The A cover and the B cover look great. And even the, uh, retailer incentive one looks okay. Like, I love these, I love the way they do these covers, and I believe if you link them side to side to side, they form like a, like a span, like a spanning picture. It's really cool. But, let me quickly put the book down over here. I'm gonna flip through it as we cover, cover to cover, what happened in this book. So, one of the things I think I enjoyed most about this was seeing how Starline kind of really thought ahead on this one. This was everything falling apart for him, but because Starline is thought two steps ahead and also is quick on his feet, he's really quick, like he's quick thinking. That's what I like about him. Like the fact that he was able to like, okay, once he got his Tricor on, he was good to go. He kind of figured out what he needed to do to get out of there. And the thing that made this plan also genius, that he thought two steps ahead, was the fact that he gave his teammates, former teammates now, uh, power cores that were like a few time uses. So basically, by the time they decided they wanted to turn on him, or around that time, they'd have only a little bit of juice left. Therefore, he'd be able to capitalize on that. They wouldn't be too much of a problem hunting him down with, you know, non-stop juice. Now, if he had given them tricores, this would have gone horribly wrong for him because then they would have been able to catch him quick but only one of them had the speed core i believe that was um rough had the speed core uh yeah mimic had the flight zavik and tumble had the power yeah so only one that was able to really truly keep up with him with his tricore abilities was rough and yeah as we saw starline the thing that was funny is you think about it the bad guys were hunting for him right like zavik Rough and Tumble were hunting for him. Mimic kinda was like, ah, you know what? This has been cool, but I think I'ma head out. But first, let me go ahead and make sure Eggman comes back here and destroys everybody else. Mimic turning on his crew again. I mean, we already knew he has no alliances, so it was kind of obvious that that was the way it was gonna go. I think he was cool with Zavik for the most part, but yeah, nothing personal, kid. You gotta go, because I don't want anybody telling Eggman in case he catches one of y'all that I'm still around. So yeah, decides to turn on them quickly. So Zavik and Ruff and Tumble are on the hunt for Starline. But the thing about Starline was, like I said, he's quick to think on his feet. And he's like, it's like they're hunting him down, but he's taking them down one by one. Like, he takes out... Uh, Takes out Ruff first, like, with his toxic heal. I like that that came back into play later. Like, they mentioned that in one of the previous books, but there it is being used again. Didn't need to use his Hypno Gloves. Not this time, I guess. Uh, but yeah, he takes out Ruff first. Uh, then he takes out Tumble. And then Zavik finds them and is like, okay, F this. Like, y'all are useless. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find them myself. Zavik wasn't able to find them, but of course... Eggman comes back and is like, Hey, I uh, see you in my base, alright? Let me just go ahead and uh, level that base and take you out with it. So everybody manages to escape for the most part. Rough and Tumble got out of there before the, the raining fire from Eggman's fleet comes back. And Zavik was the only one in there. Though, technically speaking, I think Zavik was one of the few characters that could survive that. Thanks to the Power Core as well, because the Power Core also assisted him in probably powering through that rubble because like everything falling on top of you would probably even for him maybe probably destroy Zavik or kill him you know but like I think he used all of the power and that's why it just kind of shattered and fell apart like he trained that power core for everything it had just to survive that but yeah everybody kind of gets away with what they wanted Mimic is as far as he knows he's out there free now to go and hunt down Whisper and uh Probably Tangle, I'm guessing he has something against her too, but mostly Whisper. I like the fact that he's so, like, he's so caught on this revenge that the first thing he says is, I'm not, the first thing he doesn't say is, I'm free, I'm gonna go and become a new man. Nah, Mimic's like, alright, I'm free now. Where's Whisper at, though? I still got some unfinished business to take care of. You know, it's like, what are you doing, Mimic? Like, oh well, this is him, he's a mercenary and he just, he's gotta do Mimic things, so... 
Now he's out, and that's a threat because as we know he could take on the shape of anybody and this could play into something later on in some of the later issues we see after this one. It's gonna be crazy if, like, he disguises himself as Tangle and tries to meet her and, oh man, there's so many cool things you can do with this character. So I'm glad he survived. Uh, Rough and Tumble got out of there. You know what was nice about Rough and Tumble in this book? You kind of see them together all the time, but, like, seeing them, like, kind of, or seeing, uh, sorry, Tumble get so upset that that Rough got taken out, and he's like, what did you do to my brother? I'm gonna kill you! And it's like, you know, it's like, oh, that's kind of touching in a way. Like, they really only have each other. They're both idiots, idiot scumbag villains, but, like, they care about each other, legit. Like, unlike the rest, they you could actually tell that Rough and Tumble kind of felt hurt about it a little bit. Like, e even when even when Zavik comes in, kind of insults them, like, "What are you idiots doing?" And they're like, C "Come on, man, lay off." Like, even then, they're not really aggro like they really would be. Like, they kind of seem to like Zavik up until that point, and then they're like, "You know what? Forget this crap. We don't need Zavik. We don't need any of those guys." We're better off by ourselves, and they kind of decide to go off on their own. But yeah, seeing Rough and Tumble kind of have that camaraderie there, um, and and seeing them kind of care for each other a little bit was kind of uh, eye-opening a little bit. I mean, we always see them together, but just seeing that little moment of like, what the heck did you do to my brother? You know, it's like, oh, that's that's nice. Um, Zavik. Arguably the one who gets it the worst in this one because like he can barely walk after all that because he gets hammered by everything like gets the whole building falls on him It's like he still manages to get out of there alive Zavik in this book in particular again Good writing. It's amazing what it can do for a character, right? Like let me see like this the fact that he's able to call out like all of Starline's like faults and everything is amazing and even when he decided he was gonna hunt down Starline still had enough faith in his teammates to give them like things to do like mimic you stay here in case he doubles back and guess what Starline did double back excuse me so what that shows me is Zavik is actually a pretty good tactician like he thought ahead hey if Starline comes back to this lab you catch him off guard and while, we, while we're out there looking for him, because he obviously Zavik's thinking he's going to come back here to finish off his business. So it was a good idea to put Mimic in there. Couldn't really do much about Mimic turning on them and leaving them behind, but it was still a good plan. If, if Mimic had listened, he would have been able to catch Starline there. Uh, yeah, he kind of, you know, it, it's just funny to think that, like, man, Zavik is uh, kind of a character here, ain't he? I'm interested to see where they go with him now. I kind of, okay, uh, it's gonna be weird that I say this, and I'm sure some people in, in uh, the chat will agree with me. I kind of like Zavik by himself when he's written by, uh, I believe Ian wrote this, Ian wrote this one. I kind of like how Zavik is written by himself. I mean, the Deadly Six are fine, but I still don't really particularly care that hard about them. Uh, there's, there's like Zor I like, and Zaz is okay, but like, for the most part, don't care about the rest of the six. I kind of like Zavik by himself because I get to see more about him. And arguably, he's the most interesting, or can be the most interesting, depending on how he's written. So I'm kind of hoping he doesn't reunite with them for a bit, so I can kind of see more of solo Zavik. But yeah, uh, that's the last we see of Zavik. He's okay. And finally, Starline coming to the conclusion, A, this is... Zavik was right, again. He's he's called me out multiple times and every time he's been right. What am I doing with my life right now? I've been idolizing Eggman for so long, I'm a, I'm a fool. You know what? No more. I am my own man now. I'm going to take over the world and it's gonna be for me. Number one, this guy. I will conquer the world by myself because I'm gonna prove that I can do it. And this is gonna play a very interesting role now that we have I'm guessing this he's gonna be another major villain. If I'm guessing how this is gonna play out, he could be what Snively was to Ro uh, Robotnik slash Eggman in the Archie comics. Like a... They're on the same side, they're both bad guys, but because they have personal grudges and issues with one another, they're gonna wind up clashing and also having different ways of dealing with our heroes. So this will be interesting. And they still, by the way, did y'all did y'all catch that in one of those panels? They had those capsules with the mysterious uh, shadowy uh, figures in them. We don't know if they're robots of his, creations of his, clones. Uh, we don't know. A robot, android, 
or if there's somebody, there's a two characters that he captured. I was thinking they could have been Rouge or Tails, but I know this takes place around the same time as the current issues, which is 35 and 34, as as this video came out. So I know he's in the midst, he's in the middle of capturing Rouge and Tails. I don't know if he gets away with those two. And those capsules are... That would be a weird timeline because I don't think that's Rouge and Tails in those capsules. It, w it couldn't be. Because this took place before he got the Tricor. We saw those capsules in the background of issue 1 of the Bad Guy series before he got the Tricor. And that would make... St time sense for him to go and get them with the Tricor when he doesn't have it yet. So, whoever those two figures are, they're going to be a big play. Maybe those figures are what he's planning to use Tails and Rouge for. There's, why would he target Tails and Rouge? I still don't know. And that's what we're going to find out in issue number 36 when that comes out. So this will be interesting to see where Starline goes from here. He even has his own icon. Did y'all notice that? It's like it's like, it's like like a wavy thing of five stars on it. Like I think that's supposed to be his hair. Like, dang, Starline, how vain are you that you put your hair as your emblem? But yeah, I think this is a great way to end it. Everybody kind of got off with what they wanted for the most part. Uh, I guess... We're not back to square one because the villains are now out to do whatever they please, uh, running concurrently with what's going on in our uh, current issues. So, with that being said, we now have about seven villains in the story. In our current IDW universe, we have Eggman with Metal Sonic. I kind of put those two as one. Uh, we have Ruff and Tumble, who I kind of put as one as well. Mimic, Starline. Zavik and his Deadly Six, who I also count as one, that's five. Then we have uh, um, Clutch, who's six. Not really a major villain, but he's there. And, oh, maybe we only have six. I might be forgetting one. Off the top of my head, I cannot think of one. No, I can't think of another one, Chad. I think I think six is what we have right now. Pretty decent number. We're still growing, and uh, the IDW universe is continuing to expand. This is a great way to end this series, honestly. Um, this one, I don't remember what I gave the last one. It's been a, like a month, chat. So if I get the score and I say this one I liked better than the last one, and I give it a, a lower score than the last one, it's because I don't remember the scores. I'm just giving the scores based on what I feel at this moment off the top of my head. So this one will get an eight point. Seven out of ten. I like this one a lot. Solid ending, cause I was like, how are they gonna, how are they gonna stop this one? How are they gonna end this and make it satisfying? Good job, they did it. Good job, Ian. And your whole writing clue, clue, crew. Wow, cannot talk today. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's issue. Uh, what didn't I like in this book? Hmm, I can't think of anything I really didn't like. There was action, there was intrigue, there was nice little banter between the villains, and uh, no, I can't really think of anything I didn't really like. It progressed the story and kind of gave us a little look at why things are playing out the way they are right now and where Starline is at this point in the story. So, honestly, you know what I would have called this one? I would have called this Sonic the Hedgehog uh, Bad Guys Starline or something like that. I don't know. This is more about him than any other any other character, but we still got to see a little bit more into the other characters' uh, personalities as well. So, other than that, can't think of anything I didn't really like, so I gave it a score, I told you what I liked, I dramatically read it back to y'all. Thank you all so very much for watching this far, I appreciate it. Uh, seriously, thank you guys. If you haven't already, consider hitting that like button, scrolling below, subscribing, and ringing the bell to let YouTube know that you do want to watch the videos I put out when I put them out. And, uh, yeah, also, a brief shout-out and thank you to my patrons who have been supporting these videos for a while. Thank you guys so very much, Jazz Hands, Jazz Hands. Uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, if you'd like to become a patron, too, for as little as $2 a month, they, you can get early access to the comic reviews for the YouTube side, just a small perk and benefit for becoming a patron, and, uh, you get a credit at the end of these videos. Thank you. Uh, what else? Is there anything else I want to say before I end today's video? Oh, yeah! Uh, Happy New Year, everybody. I think I said it at the beginning of this video, but I want to say it again. Happy New Year, everybody. Hopefully, everybody has a good one this year. 2021, let's hope this year winds up better than the last, because 2020 was ugh, not great. So, here's to future stories, and uh, 
19k subscribers. That's what I'm that's what I'm aiming for next. Guys, I will see you all in the next video. So in the meantime, at the time of this recording, still be safe out there. Wear your mask, wash your hands, and social distance if you do go outside. I will see you all next time. Stay safe and stay tuned. And I won't be proving I'm Eggman's equal. I'll prove I'm his superior in placement. Fuck. <laughs>